Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've got a small project and I'm going to put it together on my Strong Hand Build Pro uh, Precision Welding Table. And there's four of them and they're very small parts. I don't really need a table this big to do them, but it's still very much worthwhile for me to use the fixturing and tooling to, to put these things together. So I got very lucky here. The, the, the uh, black V-pad things that slip in the holes there happen to be the exact right height that I need. Uh, to put the tube at the height that it needs to be to go through that hole in that piece of angle iron. And just using the square, getting it squared up, locking everything down, I'm just about up and running right there. That's going to hold that part in place nicely. And there's another little gusset that goes back there. And then this piece of half inch plate that's been machined. It's still got a hole that needs to be drilled in there, but I'm using it for fit up purposes now and then the hole is going to be drilled in while I weld the first part of it. Just using an extra riser block, a uh, little part that's got some yellow on it there, I uh, use it to square with. You can see I use it for a square. It just, it, it's, you know, you, you can use parts of the fixturing kit actually as tools sometimes. But um, that's going to get welded there, there, just about everywhere you can think about getting weld, there's, there's going to be weld. And this is hot rolled st uh, steel, so there's mill scale involved. And it needs to be TIG welded, so I've got to, uh, now that I've figured out the fixturing, I've got to take a grinder and clean off the mill scale off the plate. I know you don't want to watch me grind, so through the magic of video, we did that already. All right, so that's how it goes together once again. Real simple little affair, but uh, if you can imagine trying to get everything indexed, by hand and just tapping it around with a square and, and, a, and a vise and, and trying to use a level and all that to get all the pieces square with one another and parallel with one another to be hard. Now I use a third hand on part of it because I need to get my torch in there and if I clamp it it's going to be really hard to get the TIG torch in there so that little third hand tool is really handy for stuff like that. I'm just getting light TIG uh, tacks on here to start with by getting a real, real quick blast of amperage just so I can get everything locked in place. And then I'm going to put several more of them. And then once this piece is tacked up, I want to go ahead and weld all those. Because that thing has to be welded all the way around. You can't even have access. You can't get access to it. All right. One way is that, just, just clamping it and spinning it. Here's another way. And I'm trying to show you all the versatility of this table and the tooling package. You know, another way of just set up a little welding turntable station like this. The uh, clamps have, a lot of the clamps have the option of a, attaching a v-pad to the swivel foot see how easy that is just a little spring clip that locks in there so I can make myself a little turntable station there just like that or I can use these magnetic v-pads it's even quicker and I don't have to loosen the clamp every time I turn around so it doesn't take much time to do that and that makes a, a, a kind of a makeshift little turntable for spinning round parts Weld a little at a time, roll them over. And that's really much, really pretty much the way I, I settled in on welding these, uh, these little plates on the end of these tubes here. I'm just showing you some arc shots here. I'm leaving the rod in the puddle, and uh, that, that turned out to be about the easiest way to do these parts. All right, let, let's look at this now. See that hot rolled? I cleaned it pretty well, but some of the areas in the pits still got some of that stuff. You can just see it boiling out. Just, you got to clean that hot roll really well. I use about 130 amps, 332nd tungsten, 116th filler rod, number 5 cup with 10 CFH argon. Just rewind and pause if you miss that. Another way to weld those round parts, another option would be this. These, these little magnets on these V-pads are strong. See, that's quarter inch wall tubing there. So that's pretty heavy, but it holds it no problem. So another way I could do it, and I did one or two of them like this, was just like that. And I sat on a little uh, stool like you would do a brake job on and just got comfortable and welded a couple of these up like this. Welded as far as I could, then stopped and, you know, spun the part a little bit. And then just keep on going like that till I'm done. Pretty, pretty handy, I'll tell you.
All right, now that I've got that piece welded, I need to tack the rest of it up, and I've got to check my dimension here. It's supposed to be 7.55, and it's just about 7.55, so I'm ready to go. Tack the rest of it, and then weld the other end before I weld the, the uh, heavy plate on the end. Get some tacks again there, and then pull it all apart. And I've got to weld this run here, in addition to both sides of that other weld. So I just prop it up near the edge of the table where I can drag my glove and finger along the edge of the table. Make this long run here. I'm pulsing here at around 30 pulses a second. It doesn't look like it's that fast. That's just the camera, but uh, it wasn't flickering near that much under my helmet. I don't, I don't like it uh, like that. So I pulsed at kind of a minimum of 30 pulses a second, roughly, uh, you know, Roughly 40% background and uh, probably 50% on time. And because I'm welding next to an edge like that, and because I'm not using a foot pedal, that keeps the heat from wandering and melting that edge off too much. I'm just using a torch switch and preset amperage, and uh, that worked out pretty well. Now, for the rest of this thing, I wanted to get it up higher, so I just put a riser block to, got it, to get it up right in front of me where it was more uh, comfortable. You know, they always said when I was in welding school, the main thing is to get comfortable. Well, this will help you. I can get it up here where I can stand and, and, uh, and look over it and uh, make this weld here without much problem. See, those magnets are strong enough that I can even uh, rest the cup and, and walk the cup on, on this uh, without moving the part all over the place, even if I put a little torch pressure on it. So that's what I'm going to do. Walk the cup on this joint and it looks something like this. Again, leaving the, the wire in the puddle and just walking it, wiggling it back and forth, keeping a good tight arc, keeping a little pressure on that rod to keep it pushed in the puddle, and that's that. Now this is gravy weld here. This is this is uh but it needs to be straight, and if I just uh, tack it and uh, you know, weld it up, it could get crooked and that could be a problem. You see how it's pulled? I put a tack on one side just to show you how it would pull on the other. It's not a lot, but you don't need that. So just clamping it with these uh, half C-clamp type uh, things that come with the uh, tooling package for the table. It's very easy to lock them down with one, uh, one motion and then uh, tack them and, and weld them up. This is all just 1010 uh, 10 to 1018 10, steel. This is a hot roll piece to a real clean piece, and I cleaned it pretty well. That hot roll is tough to get off sometimes. And it's all different, different thicknesses and different types of, uh, I guess it depends on where, what steel mill it came from. Some of, some of it's really hard to grind off, and some of it's a lot easier. But it uh, sure does weld better when you get it off. And I forgot to clean it off one of them. You can see it there. It just takes all the fun out of TIG welding if you don't clean the hot roll scale. See, they with, with them clean, they went really nice, flowed really well like that, and that's not so much. That's when I, when I forgot to clean off, and I just drove on anyway. Probably shouldn't have, but I did. So remember to clean that mill scale when you're TIG welding on hot roll steel. So with that all done, the last thing to uh, put on is that thick piece that we just welded that like uh, boss do, that's actually going to go in some kind of hoist. It's going to lift a really light part. It's kind of overkill, but uh, you know, it's for balance more than anything. So get, use it again, using that uh, riser block to square it up and everything. Already checked my distance. I'm going to get some tacks on there. The TIG torch and then weld it all up. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Four of them. Good night's work. Stayed real late. And then the next day, I got about 50 of these things coming in the door. And uh, again, very small part with, on a big table, but still very handy to fixture them up and, and uh, weld them all up. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.